Good morning, everyone. Well, we are about to dive off into something today. Uh, I have made me a YouTube channel. Um, not that y'all want to see my redneck face any more than you already have to, but I've, there's all kind of stuff I do in my life, stuff that happens and stuff that I see that I want to share with folks and don't ever get a chance to. Uh, stuff that I've learned. Um, I'm only 41 years old, but I feel like I've learned 10 lifetimes full of stuff. Uh, hang out with a bunch of old men, uh, out hunting and fishing, and learned a lot from my family. Um, and there's a few things. I've had some people ask me about taxidermy work, um, how to do it, how to get started. If they may just want to mount their own deer because they've got 30-something deer on the wall and are paying crazy amounts of money for 30 deer mounts. Um, well, I, I learned on YouTube. Um, I'm not going to lie, I've never been to any classes. Uh, I've got 20-something deer that I have killed because I've been fortunate enough to kill a lot of big bucks. Um, not to brag, but I, I spend a lot of time in the woods, um, maybe more than just about anybody I know and have since I was about five years old. Um, to, to get into this kind of business, it takes a lot of supplies, a lot of equipment that you probably would never even think of. Um, so, and I may get into that a little bit in some of my future videos, but for right now, what I'm going to do, I've already got a hide that is, is tanned, it's ready to put on a form. Um, I've got the form ready. Um, it's actually a gigantic, gigantic eight point. Um, this buck right here, uh, killed in Bankhead Forest. I mean, absolute giant. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a series of videos, um, cause right now, until I get a, a, my action camera set up the way I want to, I'm going to be doing it by cell phone. Um, hopefully the audio is good and y'all be able to see kind of what's going on. Uh, but I would like to just, just go through some general short videos. Uh, I'm going to do one that, that, you know, with the ears and some stuff with the eyes and just, just general information of what you might need just to try to put your own deer on the, on the form for the first time. Uh, like I said, it's not hard. It's actually very, very fun. Uh, I've, I've really enjoyed it. I quit my job this last uh, February uh, to do this full time because luckily my lifestyle and my hobby has turned into a way to make a living for me, which is a dream come true. Um, wish I wish I'd done it 20 years ago, uh, but I had no idea until about, I guess it was about six or eight years ago when I actually decided I wasn't going to pay any more for taxidermy work. Um, and just started watching YouTube videos. I've, I've probably watched, I don't know, 50 to 100 videos. Uh, everybody does different different styles, different kinds of taxidermy, different different methods of doing everything. Um, which is one reason why I wanted to make some of these videos because the important thing is there's no right or wrong way, I guess, to, to mount an animal. The, the most important thing is preserving the hide uh, where you don't have bugs, you don't have rot, um, you don't have discoloration over time. To try to try to keep that to where it's it, it just doesn't fall apart after you get done with your work um and after that all you've got to do is figure out if you watch enough videos everybody's got a different system or a different um talent some people are very good at using scalpels some people are better with a knife some people are are good with with straight cape needles um i prefer a, an l-shaped short cape needle uh, it just depends on your, your personal preference and what you feel comfortable with and what you're good at. Um, but anyway, I'm going to get started here. Uh, I've got the ears turned, um, which is, like I said, in the future, I'll, I'll put some videos on here on how to get all this prepared and prepped to this way. I, I actually do my own tanning. Um, and you can send hides off, have them tanned, have them sent back to you. It costs a little bit more, maybe a few months of turnaround time. Um, but it would actually make your job a little bit easier. We wouldn't have to fool with this. Plus, it, it's a little bit less equipment you'd have to buy to, to get that taken care of. But anyway, one thing that, I, that I've done over, over the last several years is try to see that not maybe the easiest, but the, also the fastest way to do something right um, to where I can turn over two and three deer a day once they're tanned. Um, that kind of efficiency gave me the opportunity to be able to do 60 or 80 deer heads a year while I was still working full time. Um, and uh, anyway, one, one thing that I like to do, some people don't like to use ear liners. Um, this right here is a, just a standard ear liner. Um, it's got the inner ear still in it. The, full, the, the base of the cartilage is, is still on there. Um, it's made out of plastic. It's flexible. You can trim this with a pair of scissors. 
Uh, some people like to use Bondo or other different fillers. This to me, this is $7.50 before you pay tax and shipping. Um, it's worth eight or nine bucks to me for in, in five seconds, I've got to ear on my deer and it's one less thing I've got to deal with. Uh, they're also rigid. So when, if your deer falls off the wall because uh, you know, your girlfriend's cat jumps on it, knocks it off the wall, which I actually had a customer have that happen by the way. Um, the ears don't break in half or fall off or get you know contorted. Uh, keeps the edge of the ears from, from bowing in um, and curling over a period of time. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna show you all a few little tricks I do here uh, that, that would just make it easier for, especially for a beginner, this is a piece of cake. Uh, the airliner I showed you a minute ago, these are, these are whole, whole airliners. What I like to do, when I, when I flesh my deer out, let me set this phone down where y'all can kind of see what I'm doing here. When I, when I get these ears turned, you've got to get the cartilage out of these ears where you've got the ears turned inside out basically. There's no cartilage left in there. What I like to do is I leave, I leave this cartilage at the base of this ear. And what that allows me to do is I'll take my ear liners and I actually cut them. I cut them off. I just use a, a reciprocating saw with a fine tooth metal blade on it so I don't tear these half to pieces. But I just cut it off right there. And when you put this ear liner in, this lip on this cartilage will actually lock behind this thing right here and hold this all together to where your, your ear isn't sliding around when you're trying to put clay in there and form it. And it, it just really makes for a quick job. Like. Let me, let me show y'all, like you've got your, your ear like this, you've still got the inner ear inside because you left the cartilage and all there. So rather than having to replace that, I just cut this out and use what's already there. Um, I would actually glue this up, get a little bit of glue here. A little bit of glue on the top edge of that is plenty. Um, it actually will spread out in there once you put it in the, in the ear. But all you've got to do is take that, slide this in here, like so. Take your hands right there and squeeze. And it'll push that ear liner in there. Now I'll take my thumb or a finger and where this inner ear is, you can hold on to the edge of that ear liner and pop that right in there. And just like that, you have got an ear to work with. Um, that looks just about right now, just about as good as it will ever look um, without any kind of fuss, mess. I mean, that take, what did that take? Two seconds? Um, and that to me, like I said, is the way to do ears. Um, I don't personally like Bondo. Bondo may actually save you a little bit of money. You don't have to buy ear liners. Bondo actually also gets right in the edges of that ear and within several minutes once it dries, you've got a good, dry, solid ear. Um, it, it takes the shape of every ear. Um, sometimes you have to trim a little bit to actually get the, the size of the ear on each deer. And you can buy these in different sizes. They come in small, medium, and large. Like I said, you can trim them with a pair of scissors. They're very easy to work with. Um, but like I said, some people, if, you're, if you do body work, um, I've, got, I've got a friend of mine that does a lot of, of body work. That's actually what he does for a living. And he, he loves using Bondo. He's used to it. A lot of experience with it and it's very he's comfortable with that and that's what he uses in his deer he does his own taxidermy work for his deer and he he likes not having to pay for airliners and to him the bondo is, is easy um for me personally i hate using bondo um not a big fan of of any kind of two-part liquid anything it just it it slows you down and it's just it's just aggravating it's a mess um but like i said for me this was the way to do ears on a deer and uh, I really appreciate y'all watching. And if you're seeing this on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel and send me some thumbs up.